and here's a look about uh, what this project is going to be uh, it's going to be a 6 by 12 roughly uh, just a little deck in the front enough to put a couple of chairs over here stairs right up no railings close enough to the ground don't need it so we'll get a good view of the lake anybody that's here will be able to sit out here and this is uh, usually in the shade most of the time um, so it'll be a nice place to sit in the summer um, but I yesterday I put these two I put these two columns in uh, they're two feet down um, the reason that I did that and I did it yesterday without the cameras is normally when you're working on a house um, the box uh, of the deck is bolted uh, to the house and you have a place to start so you can square it it's much easier to get the uh, get the deck square mark exactly where your posts are going to go set them in the concrete and wait till the next day and then you are good to build the deck onto but because this is freestanding um, I had to get at least get those two in and didn't have the cameras with me and well, digging a hole and doing all that's not too exciting so didn't figure anybody would care as you can see they still haven't come they were supposed to come Saturday to fix the door and as you can see we've got an automatic door opener now so anyway I got to call them back but uh, so that's what it'll be so that's what uh, today's is going to come out to to about here and um, I'm basically just going to get the frame set get the other two uh, or the other three uh, posts in and um, then tomorrow I'll start actually framing it Everything will be no maintenance. Trips deck, even the posts and everything will be wrapped. Here's a saw you won't see every day, ten and a quarter. Had this for, geez, I don't know, 25, 30 years. Cuts to four by four. One shot. No muss, no fuss. Two by eight, so they're seven and a half. Leave it a hair down because I can lift it up. It's it's better to be a little bit low and lift it than have it be too high and I have to try to notch it.
here's another indispensable tool, especially since I have David to help me hold the other end. It's a Bosch uh, laser tape measure, and it's very accurate. Very accurate. Nice not to have to be using the generator every time now. Told you that thing's accurate. But it's, this isn't going to be structural. This is just for the last board. And it's going to get a Simpson bracket on the inside of it anyway. 90 degree. But this one basically, the only thing this is going to hold is the first or last board, however you'd like to look at it. It will end up being the last board because I'll start in the front, but technically it's the first one because it's closest to the building. put a bit on the top. Usually, lately I've been finding the bits on the bottom. Or at least where you couldn't reach it. That one is right on top. Perfect. Got a water line. The water line runs right here. So, this is six feet, but I gotta make sure that I don't, this post isn't gonna interfere. It's time we put the new bit in there. Now for the front. What I do is I just clamp a piece of wood underneath just to hold it up. But you don't have anybody to help you hold it. This dimension is the same as the back, so in the front will be the same. This way we can square it. I'll show you that after.
Now to square it, this is usually easier to have two people, but with the size of this one, it's not. Basically, you're just gonna go corner to corner, that outside corner to this outside corner, measure it, and the other one, should, when we do that way, it needs to be the same. This is 163 and 7 eighths. You gotta make sure you get right on the corner. One sixty-two and a half. So we're about three quarters off, so that means it needs to go that way about three eighths of an inch. With construction ma master calculator, you can I could I could have gotten the, uh, what the diagonal would be without having to measure it twice but not everybody has that calculator so I'm going to do it this way for you eighth of an inch too much this is where it starts. The eighth of an inch really doesn't matter much anyway. But this is where it gets hard when you're moving it by yourself. Good idea to put a brace on it this way it can't move and this is where now I can mark off with uh, with the four by fours there's gonna be one here there'll be one here and there will be one here and one back there in the middle. So, but by doing this, and normally, like I said, normally what I do is I notch these so that it actually sits. This would be flush. This goes down into the ground, but this would actually be notched so it's not just having bolts holding it up, but it actually is sitting on the wood. But for this little deck, freestanding nobody's going to use it i'm not wasting the time to notch them they'll be fine i do have to make one notch so that'll show you how to do it or you'll see how i do it basically set the saw to an inch and five eighths you take uh the eighth inch curves and then chop it out. Chop it out. Better to do this over a garbage can. There you go. Yeah, 
I've got all the joints in. Um, I didn't, I didn't video it. Just putting them in. You saw one go in. They all go in the same way. Uh, I'm still going to put joist hangers on them, even though I don't really care for joist hangers much. People rely on a joist hanger instead of toenailing everything, and then putting a joist hanger on. They just use the joist hanger as what holds it up, and then you see when decks fall down, and they, well, I had a joist hanger. Well. I don't care for them, but I'm putting them on anyway. But you could cut that in half. You could cut those joists in half, and it would take a lot to rip those out. Um, so, But I want to show you how to make the stairs. So the first thing you want to do is you need to know the distance between the top of the deck and the ground. This one's fairly easy because it's only three, three steps total. Um, but you want to put a straight edge out about as far as the stairs will end up coming measure the ground and you want them to be in the vicinity of seven and a half inches uh, anywhere from seven to eight uh, but seven and a half is optimum especially the step from the this is a two by eight so that's seven and a half inches and I won't get into calculating the difference uh, if you're doing it inside in a house what you need to do it's easier for you to do them out here um, I won't confuse you but uh, Whatever the decking is on top, if it's the same as on the, the treads of the stairs, you don't have to do any calculations. Everything will be the same. Um, and that's the case here. There'll be four stringers, um, and it's going to have uh, Trex uh, decking as well for the treads. And everything's going to be wrapped with a three-quarter inch um, AZAC board, PVC board. Um, so everything, the stairs will be closed in and that so there's no calculations needed there either so I won't go into that so we've got the distance this one actually works out to be seven and a half inches um, which is good and what you do is you get a framing square and these are little uh, screw-on stops so what this does is gives you an accurate reading each time as you move it down so what you're doing first this is the rise seven and a half inches and this would be called the run uh, 10 inches that'll give me an inch about an inch overhang for the nosing um, and the only and I'll point it out afterwards the only place where you have to do a little bit of uh, calculation not calculation but you have to account for is the thickness of the plate of this plate here some people will put it right up against it I like mine going underneath and actually fastening to a joist it's much better that way um, or at least put a horizontal block across so that it pushes up against something there um, so the top the top stair and you count this top as a stair because it's actually underneath it um, so you have to take off the inch and a half really inch and five eighths on these it's a little bit bigger so you have to take that off the top one so after you mark it you'll see it and I'll show you after but after I mark this and I'm gonna put the chest cam on as I do it so I'll do it again but so when you mark this one you have to take this you wait till the end or have another square I just didn't bring out a second one I've got about ten of them but I didn't bring it out uh, take this off and then this is an inch and a half wide, so you just move this over to there and mark it again. Now, if you were doing this on, say, uh, if, if it wasn't a 2x8 and it was a 2x10 or a 2x12, well, then you have to make a notch down over here in order to go up underneath it. But this one, because it's equal, I don't have to. So I'm going to uh, switch over to the chest cam and get this marked out. Beautiful sunny day. It was 70 degrees this morning and we have those clouds coming in we're supposed to get rain and the temperature by morning is going to be 28 degrees so we're going to have a 42 degree uh temperature change and i i actually have on my no sleeve shirts it's uh <laughs> but i brought a sweatshirt over there which i'm probably i can feel the temperature dropping already but i want to try to get this done before it starts to rain so i'm going to switch over to the other cam i think that'll work there we go um, so you want to start with a sharp pencil make sure you got a nice tight point 
because stairs are very particular. You want them to be cut perfectly. And you're going to leave enough room here at the head. You'll see afterwards. But so you have enough to go in up and underneath. So it's you want about the width of a tread anyway there. So that's about to do it. So basically, I showed you how to set it up on the other on the other previous clip. So basically, right here, this counts as number one. That's the top. And you just line up right here. You just, that intersection, you just line that up. Mark it again. And this, this one here doesn't get cut all the way. but you still need to mark it. So, as I said, we're gonna take these off now. And what I always do, I've had these for, shoot, I don't even know, 40 years, <laughs> probably, um, is screw them back together and I used to, well, I still have it, but I have a 30-foot tool trailer and had everything in it. I don't use that anymore. I took all the racks out of it, all the toolboxes and shelves and everything. But if you drive with these, even in a mobile toolbox, if you don't tighten these with a, with a wrench, they will inevitably vibrate loose and then they'll be, you'll lose these. Um, so just a little tip there. So... Here at the top, you need to also need to mark that one. And remember I said we had to take an inch and a half out of this. So that, and obviously that one, it needs to go straight across. So that, again, is the the front box or plate whatever you'd like to call it and then here this really doesn't matter you just need to have enough I mean if you're trying to fit it up against something it would matter but you want everything to be 90 degrees to each other so that's plenty right there so and then down at the bottom so this is this is the first step second step really the third step but there'll only be two steps till you t touch the ground um, and so this is the part here where if you were putting this inside a house, you would have to cut this. You'd have to take off the, so the, in this case, it's five quarter. You'd have to take five quarter off so it fit. So you had the same size step here. Um, but in this case, we don't have to. Um, this one can just get cut. I cut it longer and I still make I'll still make a bottom on it like that. And this will go in the concrete. And just as a reference point, you can still bring that one across, but it's don't cut. Just because you don't want to cut that one there. Otherwise, you you it would sit on the concrete. I like to have it in the concrete when I dig when I dig for the footing there. So that's basically that's basically it right there. So now we're gonna cut it. And what I usually do on these, just so I don't waste the board, is I'll cut, I'll cut it off right there. Either way, you could still you could still use that 
either you're going to waste a little bit no matter no matter how you slice it um, and then you just have to put it back up to cut that other piece <laughs> So as you can see, there's this little bit that has to come out. the one and you can verify make sure it fits um, but you kind of have to their template so this is this one's gonna have four so just have to mark them through make three more out of them so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm not gonna film doing all the rest of them so I'm gonna get to that